Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. So I wanna do a story today about real estate and talk about um, some interesting things that I've noticed. I was just in Las Vegas and we were driving down the highway and there was a huge billboard and a massive development of brand new homes and it said zero down. And it said zero down to buy a new house. And it's interesting because my son looked at me and goes, look at that dad, that's interesting. And I wish we'd have pulled over and done a story about this underneath that billboard, but we just, we were covering the silver story down there this last weekend and we're on a time crunch. And it's interesting because there's only one reason, just so you know, that a builder would have to put up a sign like that. I just want to get that out there. Is, um, either, actually, there's two reasons. Either they can't sell those houses or they are wanting to ask more than market value. They're going to go ahead and finance them themselves and they want to get suckers in and get them in with zero down. So that's, that's the only reason. That's the only two reasons that I could see that a builder would offer 0% down. Now I'm already seeing interesting uh, uh, changes in the loan market. We're already seeing um, appraisals being waived left and right all over the country in hot markets like California, Florida. Um, they're, they're waiving appraisals, all right? We are literally going right back into 2008. And if you think that we're not because we don't have these uh, weird uh, uh, hybrid loans, you're I'm totally mistaken because the other day I got a phone call from a loan company. I just want to see what the market was like. And uh, everybody was coming in. It was funny because one of these loan companies, it was one of those, um, like, I don't remember what the name of it is, but it's an internet site that says, hey, we could give you two and a half percent. I'm like, what? That doesn't seem right. So I called them up, to, filled out the little brochure. And sure enough, everybody had called me. Uh, they said, uh, well, what, what can I do? I'm like, well, you said two and a half percent. Like, oh no, it's three. And I said, well, okay, I got to get going. Get to get going. I'd hang up the phone. And you know, it was just a way of sucking you in, right? And then finally one guy goes, well, wait a minute, what, lo what percentage did they tell you? And I said, they said two and a half percent. And I said, well, we could get you down near that. And I go, how? And they go, well, we got this loan where it's two and a half percent, it stays fixed for seven years. And, and before he could stop, I'm like, yeah, I know, it's a seven one arm. And he goes, oh, no, 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 those, those loans are gone. And I go, so you're not saying that it stays fixed for seven years and it goes into an adjustable rate? And he goes, well, it's sort of like that. And I go, all right, listen, what, this is what you have to understand. <laughs> The loan companies are just trying to change the names, the banks of these products, because they don't want everybody just coming right out and going, whoa, we're back in 2006, 2007 again. Uh, they're just changing it. It's the same product, different name, all right? Um, those are all coming back. And uh, this, was, this idea, this video is based off of a, uh, a comment that a, uh, a subscriber sent, uh, Richard, and I wanna thank you, because remember, your guys' comments are what get me going and get me excited and motivated to do these videos. He says, uh, he's been in real estate lending for 27 years. In major metropolitan areas of California, Austin, Texas, the hot real estate markets where they are offering 20 to 100% over asking has peaked. I'm 100% sure of that. 54% of all homeowners in the US are over 55. They will start listing now that they've been vaccinated. A ton of inventory will be dumped on the market, and I think we will see 4% 30-year fixed mortgages within 12 months. I moved out of California to Texas. Smart man. I, I want to be your neighbor. <laughs> and I'm on a two-year lease. So he did essentially what I did um, back in 2018 when I sold my house and I bought Bitcoin with it. And I, I was waiting for this crash. Now, a lot of people said I was nuts because Look at the facts. My house since 2018 has increased in value. Sorry, you're gonna hear a vehicle coming by me. I just decided to set up in the most random places for you guys. My point being though, is a lot of people would say, well, you know, you're crazy, you missed out, but I really didn't hit the rumble strips. And they don't need to realize, you know, in 2018, the price of Bitcoin was, so that's okay. But the thing is, is like Richard says, you know, the 4% I believe he's looking at is because right now the dollar is collapsing and to stabilize the dollar or bring value to it, interest rates have to rise. Whether that be the Federal Reserve making the decision to do that, which could be catastrophic, okay? If, if interest rates on a 30 year fix was to rise to 4%, that means the payments go up that much more. You know, literally you're looking at about a 30% a increase in the interest portion of the payment. Well, when we're dealing with, and I'm not joking, when I say the dumb money, at the end of a cycle, when things are racing up, only people that are pretty foolish that all they see is the dollars they can make, like at the top of a stock market peak, or even a cryptocurrency uh, peak, 
and they don't understand longer term cycle waves, those people are just racing in for a quick buck and they always get slaughtered, all right? And that's the thing, if it moves to 4% because the Fed does it or because the bond market decides to do it for them, that's a whole nother thing to talk about, then we're gonna see a downturn in, in real estate. The other thing we have going against the real estate market right now, and don't get me wrong, this isn't gonna happen overnight. Anybody sits there and goes, well, Ninja, you said that lumber was gonna crash and I haven't seen it. Well, I'm like, well, you're dumb. Like you can't listen to the whole video and go, I literally said like, there's gonna be a point where people are gonna stop buying it. And I believe personally, it's not investment advice that it's gonna happen around mid, mid uh, summer and they're just gonna stop buying it. And guess what? The price is gonna fall. I don't give a crap what you think the price is gonna fall. Cause someday the lumber bill is gonna go, or Home Depot is gonna go, uh, uh, we still wanna sell lumber. Yeah, cool, lower your price. Okay. That's how it works. So if you think that oh, it's gonna happen overnight, well, it's not gonna happen overnight. Dude, look at me. I sold in 2006, got rid of all my real estate and I was panicking for two years. Everyone thought I was a moron. All right, cool. In the end, was I a moron? No. Was my timing off? Yeah, but the fact is, I remember at a certain point trying to sell one of my houses, one of my flips, and we had that thing listed for a profit of like $35,000. And by the end, I couldn't sell it. We just like liquidate this thing, get rid of it. And we only made like 6,000 bucks. And I remember my wife going, this wasn't even worth it. And I'm all, well, who would have known the market was gonna turn this fast? Just get rid of it. You know, at least we were positive six grand. Um, so, you know, this is coming from a gentleman that's been in real estate lending for 27 years. He's seen two full cycles. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you right now, these are smart people. And this is what you gotta look for, you gotta plan for. So I wanted to do a video based on that because I think it's really, really important um, that people understand that about the real estate cycles, where these interest rates are going. Now, I also believe that we could very well see a short-term period of the Federal Reserve going negative in its interest rate. And that would drive uh, mortgage rates down to two, maybe even one and a half percent for good credit on a 30-year fix. If that happens, we're gonna have another balloon float. But I'm gonna tell you what, if that does happen, you are gonna see hyperinflation for sure. And it's not gonna happen right away. It's gonna, it's gonna take, it's called a trickle-down effect. It does take time, there's a time lag, and construction's always a lagging indicator. I don't care if you think, oh my gosh, real estate's booming because there's a ton of homes. No, that's actually real estate companies that aren't that bright that are taking, because it takes forever for a group of people to come along and go, let's build some homes, okay? Then it takes some time to go, go buy the land. Then it takes time to go get the permit. Then it takes time to go get the materials and build the house. You understand it's a multi-year uh, process to go and build homes. I should know this. My point being is that just because you see new construction going up everywhere doesn't mean the market's hot. And since most people weren't real estate investors back in 2006, there were a lot of full home divisions that you saw burn down or get dozed over. And guess what? It's coming again. If you don't understand that, I highly suggest if you made it to the end of this video, you need to watch, and this is a gift, I'm telling you. There's a documentary called Burn, and it's about a bunch of... Uh, uh, firefighters in Detroit where a film crew follows them around and there's all these structure fires and why in that documentary you're gonna see how they talk about the real estate collapse and how all these homes are getting set fire because people were just done and it, you got to realize the time they were in back then and it's about to get a lot worse so guys with that being said I thank you for your time thank you for all the people hitting the like and the subscribe button and with that being said the economic ninja is out